are listening to Fountain of Thought with your hosts, Dennis Fountain and Sonny Rain. One small step for man, one giant leap for America. This show contains adult themes and language. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome, everyone, to Fountain of Thought. This is the podcast where we talk about anything and everything. Call in or leave us a voicemail on our listener line at 413-612-8037. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at TalkFOT. Subscribe on YouTube and Rumble. Or visit our website at FountainOfThought.com where you're going to find contest registrations, shout-out requests, and so much more. Now, as always, I'd like to welcome my co-host and broadcast partner, Sonny Rain. Sonny? Just go down, no, two blocks down to the, yeah, to the right. Whatever. To the right? Hi! Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Sonny, how are you doing? Oh, you. I was on my way to my vacation, and we are stuck in good old state of Maryland. Maryland? Yep, Maryland is. What's their state motto? Do you know Maryland? I have no idea. You don't. I don't know either. I was just curious. You know, why didn't you but go to Virginia? I didn't, I didn't plan on being on tonight, so forgive my mess. All right. Well, it's been a while. Uh, we've been, been in been hiatus a, it's for been a while. Long while. Long right. while. Right. Long yeah. while. And uh, for those listeners that are listening on the traditional uh, podcast avenues, you may or may not know we are now doing video. So we're now on YouTube and Rumble. So you can listen live or you can uh, watch a recorded show. And you can finally look at Sunny Rain and say, wow, is that man fat? Wow. I was going to say attractive, good looking. What a hunk of a man. What a hunk. Don't start off the show being nice. That only means you're going to be you're going to be just god awful by the end. God awful by the end. Okay. God awful. <laughs> Don't make me drag out the Bible again. Oh, I'm sorry. I won't. I won't do that. I, I, not at all. I promise. So on uh, on this kickoff episode, I wanted to talk about uh, the law, if that's okay with you. I am the law. Um, we have some uh, s- several ballot initiatives here in the state of Massachusetts that are going to make headway to the voters this fall, and some of these uh, pertain nationwide. So I thought we'd discuss a couple of them and uh, and see what our thoughts are about them, and if you and I agree, disagree, or just you know general thoughts. Sound my, good to you? My favorite ballad in high school was uh, "Faithfully" by Journey. Really? Uh, it's ballot. Oh, ballot. Oh, yeah. An- enunciate, please. Enunciate. Ballot. Yes. Ballot. No, ballot. Not, not ballad. Now we're cooking with ballad. Now we're cooking with uh, cooking grease. Okay. Did you, was that one of your favorite songs you used to sing? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a good that. tune. That's a good tune. Yeah. All right, so the uh, first up is uh, voter ID registration. And what they want to do is um, they want to have uh, people, when you come to vote, you have to present a valid government ID or a tribal ID. And lack of an ID, then you can produce uh, sign a statement saying who you are and where you live. It seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, but I guarantee you it's not going to be. Well, would you mind if I jump in on this? Yeah, jump in. That's what I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, well, let me yeah. tell you right now, this opposition to voter ID is is absolutely absurd, okay? Uh, bottom line is we ID for everything out there. You that can't is buy true. a pack of cigarettes or you can't buy booze. You can't go into certain clubs. I mean, it, this is not a new practice where you have to produce ID it, to show who you are. You can't buy whiteout at Walmart. Or, or spray paint, for yeah. that matter. Yeah. Okay, so the excuse of, oh, well, you know, that's going to make it for some people they're not going to be able to vote. That's a crock. It's a big, well, they're saying it's you, racist. It's a crock. Well, that, yeah. that, let's not even go on that one. That's yeah. even more bizarre. But the bottom line is, in this day and age, you have some sort of an ID. And to ask for an ID at the polls... Why not prove you who you are? It protects you. It protects your vote. Protects. 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 <laughs> it protects your. It protects your vote from somebody else stealing it, and it makes sure that you have a confidence that your vote has been cast. Right. And in addition to that, I have no idea what I was just about to say. <laughs> <laughs> have you been having this problem? I don't know. Is it something yeah, in the well, water? I mean, I mean, mid sentence, I'm just like gone. Well, we had a boil order here, so we had to boil our water for a while. So it's oh, you know, I, I, did that train just well, maybe in Maryland? You know that water in Maryland. I heard you got to look out for. Sorry for those viewers in Maryland, but you know, yeah. yeah. 
No, I, I to me, this is a no brainer and I don't know why it's taken so long and what the big hubbub it. Well, listen, I know what the big hubbub is, is certain people on a certain side say, listen, you know, it's oppression of voters, but it's just a ploy. So somebody might be able to cheat. So in my it opinion, like it is it so you can stuff ballot boxes? Yeah. And on top of that one, and this this vote in by mail, well, vote in by mail if it's registered ahead. That's of time, crazy. I don't, you know, again, I don't have a problem as long as it's accounted for. But this putting, you know, uh, like like California putting it out on a program, I believe, or a website, you download yeah. the ballot, you fill it out, and you mail it in. Well, how many can you print? And who's going to stop you or watch you doing it? Nobody. Look at look at the guy. Um, they pulled over in the parking uh, restaurant parking lot or something. He was asleep or whatever. You know, knock on the thing. hello, up, sir. What's the problem here? And the guy yeah, was yeah, guy yeah. was high as a kite, and he had a whole bunch of stolen uh, mail-in ballots. Yeah, and you, you notice know, he, we haven't heard much about that. You know, no, no of course not. going into that. You no, know? no. But I remember no. where my train was going. Um, the bottom line with this, as far as Massachusetts goes. They're telling you, even if you don't have the uh, the ballot, they're not. I mean, the um, ID. They're not saying you're gonna go home and you can't vote. They're just saying, well, then you're gonna have to fill out the sheet. Right. If there's any questions later, then you may have to produce something. So it's right. not like you're gonna. Nobody's gonna lose the chance to vote. Right. So and it's, you, it's a crock. It's a big crock. You so attest say, to who you are. Yeah. So how would we want you want to vote yes for that then? I'm 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 saying yeah yes to voter ID. Yeah, thumbs up on voter thumbs ID. Up. Yeah. Thumbs up to voter ID because it's gonna be the law. Law. The law. I am the law. All right. All right. Next one I want to talk about is a uh, sale of fireworks. So Massachusetts, believe it or not, is the only state, the only state that bans fireworks completely, and they're looking to change that. So they want the new proposed law will require. Um, uh, you can have permission, use, and sale of consumer fireworks by persons 21 years of age or older, as long as you don't have any uh, fireworks going off in uh, school property. Uh, apparently, they don't want any in preschool, kindergarten, or grades 1 through 12, or any educational services. All right, I can deal with that. Um, and you have to be 21 or older. I can deal with that. The only other caveat, I believe, is they're going to put a... Um, time frame on it of uh, hours of operation and it says here uh fireworks outside of the hours of 12 p.m to 11 p.m except on december 31st and july 4th the weekends immediately before and after the 4th of july at which time that will be extended to 12 30 in the morning what say you on fireworks well, first of all um it isn't necessary to put all the extras in there bottom line is Massachusetts is a small state. If you want fireworks, it doesn't. It's not going to take you very long to cross the border. Yeah, we go over to New Hampshire them. and get them. I I have been listening. There hasn't been a Fourth of July in my lifetime. I haven't heard firecrackers, M80s, cherry bombs, yes. uh, butt whistles, you name it, going off. Okay, so it's not a it's not a it's not a situation where oh, this is something new that we're going to be having available to us. It's always been there. It's going to be one simple advantage. The sale now will go to our sales tax and not, right. uh, not another sales tax. I mean, or another well, state sales tax, right? If, it, if these things are going to be bought and blown up, we might as well get the money for it instead of making some of the state rich. Yeah. So, um, again, this comes under parenting. This comes under uh, making sure that there's a, an age limit to obviously to buy them. And, right. and being as responsible. Long, as long as it's responsible and people use that word, common, common sense. sense. Then uh, I, I see no reason why we shouldn't do it. I, I got a I, thumbs up on that one. Thumbs up? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right. Thumbs up. All right. That one was pretty easy. All right. So the last one I want to talk about is a, a happy hour. A lot of states have happy hour. Massachusetts does not. And there, are new, there is a new proposal that they wish to vote on. And it will allow establishments to give free drinks to one or more persons, sell two drinks to one person at the same time, sell drinks at discounted prices included at private functions, Sell a limited drinks to any person for a set time period, including private functions. Sell drinks to persons at lower prices than the general public is charged on the same day, including private functions. I'll Can say I make we a suggestion. Un yeah. Before I vote on this, I don't want to talk about it. I want to table this one for a for a future episode. You want to table this one for a future There's episode. So much there is so much to discuss here. All I'm going to give you is my my thumbs down. Thumbs, thumbs down. down. Thumbs down on the happy hour, and I believe we're going to need a whole segment to go over this. See, I'm I'm giving a thumbs up. No, oh, see, that's going to make for an interesting show. Then I you're think. a thumbs down. So thumbs we want to have a whole, we want to have a whole show about uh, 
happy hour. Not, o- not, not only the uh, the happy hour, but a lot of stuff that goes goes with it hand in hand. Yeah, definitely. So what, what do you mean goes with it hand in hand? Well, you got um, the uh, – where did I go again? Take us – Oh, uh, tr- transportation to and from, how that affects cities versus um, suburban areas, um, where you had your last train. There's so much to this. There's so much to this to consider because you just can't say his happy hour and not look at all the pros and cons that go with it. So okay. I, I think it'll be a good discussion rather than try to just cram it into Try a to jam seconds. it into uh, two or three minutes. You want to Especially have a whole... seeing we both disagree, and I am right, but. You know, excuse I, I me. Believe I have to give excuse you, me. Oh, well, I have to give you your chance, and so I can at least. I have to wrap my head around what you're saying before I laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Because listen, I'm a. Prof- I was a professional drunk. You were, so I speak from experience. So, so you know about it. happy happy a hour firsthand. Okay. All right. So uh, hey, well, let's, let me look. Let me just say right now. I'm yeah. Very proud. Uh, we were in hiatus because. I had a severe drinking problem, and I admit to it. I did. Uh, it almost killed me. I was in the hospital for well, of, well, well over seven months, and if it wasn't for my best friend uh, taking care of me, I wouldn't have made it. So he was there, he was there every step of the way, and he helped me get into programs, and and I'm I'm well over three years sober now, and uh, uh, so when I say I can speak from experience <laughs> on the subject of booze. So what you're saying is Jack JD Dan. came to help you? Well, Jack Dan was, and he had a couple of friends yeah. too. Jim Beam was yeah. over, and uh, yeah, yeah, they they brought their uh, southern, oh. their, their cousin Southern Comfort and a whole lot of other. I apologize to everyone out there. You can see my dog. <laughs> that oh. is that is fluke. Hi, fluke. <laughs> So, all right. So, what do you say uh, next week? We do uh, we do a discussion on that. Right, we'll uh, you want to do that? But, but in the meantime, again, I'm thumbs down. And I am thumbs question. up. I am thumb thumbs completely up on that. Okay. So uh, I I find that fascinating that you actually, uh, you know what? It's it's good we disagree. We shouldn't we shouldn't agree on on everything. But I am a little perplexed at that. But hey, it's it's it'll be a good topic for discussion. Are we? We're not done with this subject though, right? With what subject? The law. Do you have more you wish to discuss? Well, there's something else that I wanted to discuss. What do you want to talk about? Seatbelts. Seatbelts. This has been something that's gone on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, but with our ballots throughout the years. And I, I don't know. I'm twisted on that one. I, I find it um, to be forced to wear a seatbelt, and I have my reasons because I was involved in an automobile accident that had I been strapped in, I probably would have got killed. Not to say that, that, that the luck of the draw, like that's going to go every every time, but I just feel as the driver that you should have. You know, I don't I don't see where that has to be a requirement to. Okay, again, I'm going to disagree. Well, I figured you would, because I think wearing a seatbelt as a responsible person should, and the reason is is it keeps you in control of your vehicle if something if you start to sway or move or whatever. And I've been in also, you know, I've been in six accidents. <laughs> And uh, always hit from behind. And I got to tell you, the seatbelt has saved my life. So yours not wearing one saved your life. Mine wearing one saved my life. Um, I, I, I think that is something that should be enforced because it does allow you to stay in control of that vehicle for a longer period of time. It does keep you safe from going somewhere else. But see, that's that's like a separate issue for me because the way I look at laws is, like a helmet law. I don't agree with the helmet law. I think if you want to run around without a wearing a helmet on a motorcycle, that's your right. You putting on a helmet does nothing to save anyone else's life. It does nothing. Yeah, you disagree with that as well? Well, no, I don't disagree with it, but you're saying you, you, you're, you're, you're saying the helmet is a safety issue to operate a motorcycle. That's what you're what no. They're saying. But no, I'm not. No, that's I'm, what they're saying. That's yes, the that's what they're saying. You have to wear but, a helmet because for the safety of operating that motorcycle. Well, it's the same thing. You have to wear a seatbelt to operate a car. No, because a helmet only comes into play. You're making one a choice and one the other. I don't know. Yeah, but when you wear wear a helmet, the only time that helmet is going to help you is when your head hits the pavement or another car or another vehicle. It's not going to help you control of that motorcycle. It's not going to help you stay stable. It's not going to help you stay on the road. It's not going to help you with anything. In fact, if anything, it might impair you a bit. Uh, So I, I, uh, like New Hampshire, and I think there's another state that does that, but I, I I don't agree with the helmet law. 
That is a personal preference. I think everyone should wear one because I think you're stupid if if you're going out there even going 30 miles an hour. You, you hit the ground, your head, forget it, you're done. But well, well, All right. Well, not so we're going to be sitting here beating our usual dead horse. Okay. What do we have a name for that horse? No, not yet. Okay. We should we should come up with one though. Well, let's say. have the let's have the viewers. Yeah, we let's, have a head, we have a dead horse we like to yeah. beat constantly. So we want to beat that name, dead horse. We need a name for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, listen. Yeah. Regardless mm-hmm. why the, the the law is in place. What the the part that I guess really twists my nipple is if you get caught you not wearing it is is what is the amount of punishment they go to to enforce it. Well, okay. I can understand a safety violation ticket. Okay, whatever, 25, 50 bucks here. Yeah. Know, fine. Um, but this crap of taking that further and then enforcing in your insurance. and, and For things that six I years. Okay, I, right. that I have a problem with. Yeah. Because let's face it. The penalty doesn't the car, fit the crime. And we've all got in the car and forgot to put our yeah. seatbelt in from some time yeah. to another. And if you happen to get caught with it off, again, well, in most cases you hope you get a warning. But if you don't and the police officer believes he wants right. to write you up, and you get a fine for that. I'm okay with that. It's the same yeah. thing with inspection stickers. It's a moving violation. If, right. And it shouldn't. If you forget right. to get your sticker changed on time and then you get pulled over, you get a violation. I get right. that part and I'm not against that. Right. But putting it on my insurance and I have to pay for that for six years? For no, six years. No. Yeah. That's I just, agree. That's, that is just extorting money unnecessarily from from people. So that, from, that's, prob- that's yeah. probably why, you know, that's probably the majority of the reason why I'm against the. The, th- the seatbelt, I, but I'm not a big fan of being told what to do anyway. But I, don't know. I, I hear you, civil liberties, and I, I, I get it. I understand that. But anytime you know, anytime you infringe on someone else's rights, that's where I kind of see a an area that the government can step forward and, and, and make a law or, or or propose a law, anyways. Well, I'm gonna but, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit you did you brought up a valid point. I didn't think about the the, the control factor that um, if you are. The seatbelt would help you stay in control. If, yeah. If you know, so you're not falling to the left, falling now, to the right. Especially if you if you if you're wearing these silky shorts, these silky boxer shorts, and you got leather seats. Yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> let's move right along to our next subject. <laughs> All right. Any any Before, final thoughts on uh, on the law? Um. Yes. Yes. Respect the blue. Respect my authority. Respect the blue. Respect the blue. Respect the law. All right. All right. We got we to gotta pay some bills. So we're going to uh, be right back after I fly like an eagle and let my spirit carry me. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. (laughs) So take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. All right, welcome back. Uh, If you are interested in becoming a sponsor or advertising on our show, drop us an email at talkfot. Or give us a call at 413-612-8037. Do you have a dad joke for me? uh, Do I have a dad joke for you? Yeah. What would happen if all the cars in the nation suddenly turned pink? Are you stumped? I'm I'm speechless. You're you're, you're (laughs) speechless? So think about it. All the cars, they all just suddenly turned pink. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> and you got nothing? Uh, no, I got nothing. We'd have a pink carnation. Oh, God. That was <laughs> just god awful. Well, that's a dad joke. What do you oh, want me to my, tell you? Oh, my dear. <laughs> The moment you've been waiting for is finally here. I finally yes, true or false headlines. All right, everyone. True or false headlines is sponsored by the Ludlow Lions Club Period Project. Please consider making a feminine hygiene product donation to the Ludlow Lions Club so they may distribute them to those in need. Donations can be given to any Ludlow Lion or stop by their eyeglass recycling booth at the Ludlow Community Market on Saturday, October 2nd and Sunday, October 3rd. 
So I'm going to read you a couple of headlines here, and it's very simple. You just tell me which one is true and which one is false. First of all, I just want to tell you, nobody does a commercial plug like you do. <laughs> plug? <laughs> okay, we're going to we're gonna move right into this. All right, so uh, two headlines. One is good, one is bad. Sonny, man banned from Yellowstone for frying chicken in the hot springs or Cajun chicken lips at local Louisiana diner actually chicken anal glands what one, one of those is an actual headline the other one is false what was the, what was the second one again uh cajun chicken lips at local louisiana diner actually chicken anal glands oh, no. i'm going with that one that's good. you're going just, with that one that's I, too wacky not to be true <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really? It's Yeah, it's the first one. A man from Idaho Falls, Idaho, has been banned from Yellowstone for two years after he tried to fry chicken in a hot springs at the National Park. The man who has not been publicly named was found by park rangers on August 7th with cooking pots and two chickens in a burlap sack in a hot spring in the Shahoney Geyser Basin region, East Idaho News reported. Traveling through thermal areas is prohibited in Yellowstone due to a risk of danger and injury, and the man was cited for violating closures and use limits. He pleaded guilty in Mammoth Hot Springs Court on September 10th and was fined 1200 bucks. He was also ordered to serve two years of unsupervised probation, during which he'll be banned from Yellowstone National Park. Now, look, at, I'm no Gordon Ramsay, but if you put the chickens in a burlap bag and you submerge them into a hot spring, that's yeah. either going to be boiled chicken or steamed chicken. I don't right. see where they're getting the fry out of that. Well, the problem is... You're stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. That, no, not you. The, oh, the, the guy. Stupid. That's the, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that his problem. So, all right. I thought, here, I thought the show was turning on me again. No, no, no. Here's the next one. See if you can do better this time. All right. One is good. One is bad. Condom factory recycled used prophylactics or teacher suspended for using a condom to open a pickle jar. Which one do you think is true? Uh, I'm, you know, with all the wacky stuff going on in schools right now, I'm going to guess, uh, I wouldn't put it past a, uh, yeah, I wouldn't put it past the teacher trying to open a pickle jar. With a, so with a condom. you I'll think go that's number two is the, that is our, uh, that is our correct headline. <laughs> really? Oh, <laughs> be, no, no, yeah. no. You're not going down. No. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. Police in Vietnam have confiscated an estimated 345,000 condoms used, which have been cleaned and resold as new, state media reported. Footage broadcast by state-owned Vietnam television, VTV, this week showed dozens of large bags containing the used contraceptive scattered across the floor of a warehouse in a southern province of Binh Duong. Police said the bags weighed over 360 kilograms, or 794 pounds, equivalent to 345,000 used condoms, according to VTV. The owner of the warehouse said they have received a monthly input of used condoms from an unknown person. State newspaper Toy Tree reported, a woman detained during the bus told police that the used prophylactics were first boiled in water, then dried, and get this, reshaped on wooden phalluses before being repackaged and resold as new. VTV said it was not clear how many of the recycled condoms had already been sold. The detained woman said she received 17 cents for every kilogram of recycled condoms she produced. Neither she nor the owner of the warehouse was available for comment. And in case you... Oh, this is awful. Yeah. In case you doubt the validity, you go to our website, fountainofthought.com, and we have a picture. Why? Why? That, that's the... That's, that's, it's all you need to say to sum that it's, up. Why? Why? I, why? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Money. Again, everything else is, is money-based. Dear God. <laughs> yes. All right. So. All right. Sonny and I are going to each pick a contestant every week to play, and then we'll volley three movie sound clips at each other with a chance to earn a point for a movie title, character, and actor. If we correctly identify all three, five points will be awarded. We are allowed one clue and one pass per game. Each week, the winning contestant's name will be entered into our monthly $25 gift card giveaway. Register for all our contests at fountainofthought.com. 
So since we're starting this fresh, we have no uh, no one to play with. We got no one to play with, Sonny. <laughs> no one. No one. So there's no one to play with. Uh, Thank so... God, because there's only used condoms available. <laughs> That's right. So this is this is just going to be uh, between you and I for funsies to tell everyone what's going on. So uh, if you're listening or you're watching us, please send in your name, and uh, we want to we want to help you earn twenty five bucks. All right. And where, uh, where did, and where did they send that uh, information? If they go to our website at fountainofthought.com, there is a form to fill out. A form. A form has your name and uh, contact information. Just and, uh, fill out the form. Yeah, fill out the form. Yeah. Okay. Who's okay. going first? Uh, you go first. Go ahead. I insist you go first. All right. I'll go first. All right. I'll so. Go first. <laughs> okay. Then. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. So you ready? ready? Here is your first volley. What a world where Frank Jr. and all the Frank Jr. can sit under a shade tree, breathe the air, swim in the ocean, and go into a 7 Eleven without an interpreter. I want a world where I can eat a sea otter without getting sick. I want a world where the Democrats will put somebody up there worth voting for. I'm going to go with uh, Leslie, Nielsen, Leslie Nielsen, Frank Drebin of uh, Naked Gun. Uh, which Naked Gun? Oh, give me a break. I'm sorry. Which Naked Gun? You're going to go there? Yeah. I'm sure you want to go there. <laughs> because I, if you want to go there, if you want to go into specific sequels, uh, you, well, are, you are done. Fine. It was fine. two. It was two. Very good. Very good. See, I knew it. Yeah. All right. Throw it. Your first one is. Do it again and again. Hey, 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 you shut your face. If we want to hear you talk, I will shove my arm up your ass and work your mouth like a puppet. You hear me? You hear me? Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with, um, damn it, I can't think of his real name. I'm, it's all moments. It doesn't mean I know. I'm going to go with um, the movie is Shaft. The name of the character would be Shaft. And it's... um. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. It's uh, from uh, Marvel there. Uh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. guy yeah. That, um, that you know, that bald guy there. Yeah, um, bald guy, yeah. The bald guy. Yeah. Um, uh, if you give me a second, can't think of his name. Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, wow, pull that out. So, what's your complete answer? Uh, <laughs> complete answer is Shaft. <laughs> shaft. Samuel L. Jackson. Well, uh, except for the uh, third one, you're going to take the shaft on the I'm two gonna... shafts. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. And for that, you get a one point. One point. Yeah. What was it? Oh, well, you just take my word for it. That's no, no. What was it? <laughs> it was Samuel L. Jackson. I know, but what movie? And that was Officer P.K. Highsmith from the movie. Oh, that was the other guys. The other guys. All right. The other guys. The other guys. Okay. Here is your <laughs> next clue. Are you ready? No, I don't like you. <laughs> I think you're a fake cop. The sound of your piss hitting the urinal, it sounds feminine. If we were in the wild, I would attack you. Even if you weren't in my food chain, I would go out of my way to attack you. If I were a lion and you were a tuna, I would swim out in the middle of the ocean and freaking eat you. And then I'd bang your tuna girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to go with the other guy. <laughs> that would be See, Mark Wahlberg. And I don't remember his character name. Like this is so out. bizarre. I swear to you, there is no fix here. I didn't know what you were playing. You didn't know what I was playing. That's amazing that we both. Well, we do that. Pick, time, that's so. that's amazing. Yeah. So it is uh, the other guys. You are correct. Uh, the character name is Terry Hoyts, and by Mark Wahlberg. So you'll get to two points for that. So you're up to you're up to seven. So, yeah. Good job. Very 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 good job. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank the Academy. Yes. Okay. It's your turn. It's my turn? It's your okay. turn. Do you want me to be brutally honest? I 
think you just have a morbid desire to burn in hell. Okay. Um, again, I can't think of the guy. He's a black guy. <laughs> um, he played God in uh, in uh, Bruce not Almighty. Help you on this one. Um, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with the movie Seven. I don't know his name, the character name, and um, God. Why can't I think of his name? I, I, I don't know. I'm right I'm, now. There's listeners out there going, "It's so and so, you yeah, stupid." Yeah, I know. Man. Yeah, he was also in. I know Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I, yeah, I know. I know he's who the, he is. He's the man that you want to, to 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 talk about your life story. I know. I love his voice. He's got a really you want, good. You voice. want him to introduce you at the at the Emmys? Yeah. Yeah. I. That's it. I'm just going to go with that. I can't think of his name, and I don't want to sit here and bore everyone. I'm sorry. Oh. As soon as you Morgan say it, I'm Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Oh, God, yeah. yes. Not only that, you're wrong on the movie and the thing. It was Along Came a Spider, and the character oh. was Alex Cross. Okay. Well, you're 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 going to clean up. That's <laughs> three of them for that, baby. Thanks, thanks. All right. Uh, this one is a, a pretty easy one, and you're definitely going to get at least one of them, correct. You ready? Yeah. And over your license and registration. Your registration. Oh. Hurry up, meow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is there something funny here, boy? No. no, no. Well, then why are you laughing, Mr. Larry Johnson? All right, meow, where were we? I'm sorry, are you, are you saying meow? Am I saying meow? I, I, th I thought... Don't think, boy, meow. Do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> meow, what is so damn funny? I could have swore you said meow. Do I look like a cat to you, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Am I jumping around all nimbly bimbly from tree to tree? No, no. <laughs> Am I drinking milk from a saucer? <laughs> no. Well, do you see me eating mice? <laughs> You stop laughing right now. Yes, sir. Now, I'm gonna have to give you a ticket on this. But no buts, meow. That's the law. It's not so funny, meow, is it? That's the law. And that is a super trooper. Super and troopers, correct? That is the movie. That is the movie. Uh, I, I, I know he's from Broken Lizard. I don't remember his actual real name, and this character was Rabbit. Uh, and Larry, you want the Wilkins' name, don't you? His, the, did they call him Rabbit? That wasn't yeah, they his called nickname. Rabbit. That was oh, his that must nickname. have been his nickname because his real name was Foster. No, that was his... called him Rabbit during the whole thing. Okay, and the actor? Do you know the actor? No, I didn't know it if you said it, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Paul Soder. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, Paul Soder. All right, I got. I I know. I know. We only said three. Um, did I do my three? Or did I? I did my three, right? You have one more for me, or is that it? No, that was it. That was it. Okay, I got a bonus one for you. Okay. Just because I like the, the clip. Ready? Yep. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. <laughs> it's Naked Gun, Officer <laughs> Frank Drebin, <laughs> and it's the first Naked Gun. You're right. No, you only is. did two, buddy. You only had Alex Cross, and you had... Uh... So you owe me one, then? Yeah, I still owe you one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then give me one, then. Okay, here you go. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Mine's bigger than yours, right? It's not fair. Throw it away. All right? Come on, come on. How about if I show you what it's like to be a victim like this guy? Um, I, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on that one. Steven Seagal. Hard to kill. Oh, okay. Um, right. Mason Storm has the character. Okay. Okay, here's your uh, your final one. Okay. None of these aptitude scores meet even the lowest standards for graduation. In fact, most of the disabled cadets scored much, much higher. They did. Yeah, even in marksmanship. Um, 
Can I get a clue, please? Yeah. She, she also was... Um, she was in Bridesmaids. Maids. Bridesmaids. And am I allowed to ask for the clue one more time? The I mean, not the clue, the, uh, the sound the bite one more time? None of these aptitude scores meet even the lowest standards for graduation. In fact, most of the disabled cadets scored much, much higher. They did. Yeah, even in marksmanship. Um, wow. I, I, I think she's also from Saturday Night Live. I can see. I think I can see the actress, but uh, you got me. I don't know. It was Officer Gail Hernandez, played by, um, yeah. See, I, I'm telling you, it's in the water. Got to look again. My God, Maya Rudolph. Yeah, Maya Rudolph from the movie Chips, the remake. <sighs> yep, 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 yep. I thought I recognized his voice. Yeah. Okay. Right. I thought that would give it away, actually. Yeah, because um, you're a big '70s, yeah, yeah '80s TV yeah. guy. Yeah, but I, I'm not very familiar with her. But she's, she's the one from SNL, right? Yeah, she's been, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. been a lot of Adam, Adam Sandler movies too. I think hasn't she been? Uh, I think no, no, she? I think so. I don't yeah. remember. All right. Well, uh, good job. You smoked me on this one. Uh, you blew me away. So um, hopefully, a uh, good thing it didn't count. Can so. I have a round, round of applause? Sure, absolutely. You're gonna round of applause. Thank you. Oh, 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 you wanted a real round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. It's time to dig deep. That only means one thing. It's time for questions from my sack. All right. Questions from my spat. <laughs> that, 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 that. Questions from my sack is being sponsored by Cobbler's Corner on the corner of Arkansas and Bowen in Pantego, Texas, where you're going to find expert craftsmanship, quality work at unbeatable prices. Tell them you heard this ad and receive a 20% discount on any repair. Give them a call at 817-460-0600, where they'll save your soul and gladly die for you. All right, this is pretty... Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. All right. So this is pretty simple. Um, you, the audience, are going to send in questions for Sonny and I, and we're going to pull them out of my sack, and we're going to read a question. We'll actually do three a week, and that's how this part works. Um, but once again, we don't have any current ones, so we're going to go back to ones that came previously, and we've already pulled them out for you to save a little time. So the first question is, if animals could talk, which one would be the rudest? I didn't see any sack. If uh, I, didn't see, I didn't see any sack. I didn't see you pulling anything out. I think this is a total setup myself. <laughs> this is what I think. I think you're pulling the wool over the listener's eyes. I'm pulling the sack over their eyes? You're, you're pulling the sack over their heads right now, okay? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little I, shy to show I'm my... I'm sorry. I, I protest this whole segment. <laughs> I'll I'm, do it because I'm, I'm on the contract. You, you'll do it, but uh, I, I just don't want to show my sack right now. Yeah, well, and this is what I, I think of that. See, I just don't want to because my, it's a big one and a wrinkly one too. All right, go ahead. All right, so if animals could talk, who's going to be the rudest? Oh, it's a, that's easy. It's not no, tough. It's it's a easy. Cat. A cat. cat. I agree. A cat. See, we both agree. I agree. Oh, a yeah. cat completely, and especially one named Lucky. Oh no, he's psychotic. Yeah, he's yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one is. Uh, <laughs> How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? And I know the answer. What? I know the answer. No, I, I, you, but what, who the hell would ask that? I don't know. That up. There, no, this came from a listener. We didn't have uh, viewers. This was a listener back then. But yeah, yeah, this is an actual, they sent it in. And what's the question? How many chickens would it take to kill an elephant? Who gives a shit? Uh, I know the answer. One thousand four hundred and seventeen. One thousand four hundred and seventeen. Yeah, one thousand four hundred and seventeen. And how did you come to this, this uh, mathematical? Uh, I'm just smart. I know everything. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You, well, you doubt yeah. me? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm gonna what say. Do you... I'm gonna say one. One. 
One on one, one on one uh, doped up on bath salts. One one angry rooster. One angry one messed up. Yeah, rooster. Yeah. One angry rang angry rooster. Okay. Rang, rangry. Rangry? rangry. Rangry. One rangry, rangry one. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was stupid. Uh, that was stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one is, next question is, if you were arrested, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Well, we just if, went over this earlier. It would have had to be something to do with drinking. Something. <laughs> I, and I let agree. me tell you, that could have gone down a whole lot of roads. <laughs> this one time at band camp? Yeah. 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 Uh, there's a few things that happened at band camp. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this stuff's delicious. <laughs> what about you? Uh, uh, mine would probably be speeding. I think that would be my my thing. They wouldn't be surprised if I got arrested for speeding. Not that I ever speed. Yeah. No, I don't. I never do. But if I no. did. Not you. That, no, not me. No. Nope. No. no. All right. So the that'll do it. That was super exciting. <laughs> Yeah, could, um, could, anybody out there listening, please send in some uh, some something I can think about for a question. Yeah, please. Yeah, okay. All right, so send those in. Uh, fountainofthought.com is where you're going to find those. And uh, we, uh, like I said, we would we would love to hear hear from you. All right. Normally this time we would also do some shout outs. And uh, just so you um, know what it is. Interested in your very own shout out? Let us know at facebook.com forward slash fountain of thought. On Twitter at talkfot. Or email us at talkfot at gmail.com. And you could be rewarded for listening. I want to get rewarded for listening. How about you? I always want to be rewarded. <laughs> okay. So uh, normally at this time, this is when we do that. But again, uh, like I said, we're just starting up. So you want to send those in so we can kick off and uh, I, I you can hear your out. name. You do have a shout out? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I didn't know you yes. got one. Oh, Ready? okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to touch my monkey? <laughs> All right. I'm such an adolescent. <laughs> really? You think so? <laughs> Sonny's pet peeve of the week. All right. What do you got for us this week, Sonny? Oh, my God. What right. is peeving you off? Not that it's, you know, not, not as much today because of cell phones, but you still get, you still have voicemail. This used to be back when we had machines was even worse. It's people who don't know how to properly leave a message when you are told to by the beep. And they proceed to blah, 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 Carefully once again for the number. Pet peeve. Leave your name and your phone number first. Then you can blab to your heart's content. So I only have to hear your name and number when I rewind it. And that is my pet peeve. Of keep the it week. keep it simple, stupid, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. All right. Um pretty good show. What do you think? I bet. Yeah. 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 All right. Welcome back, I hope everyone. The listeners and the, the, the brand new viewers enjoyed and uh, all right. We'll get back. We'll get back in the swing of things again. We'll be able to just talk without without going. <laughs> final thoughts, Sonny. My final thought is: any of you that are following politics right now, I have this message for you. I want the people to know that they still have two out of three branches of the government working for them, and that ain't bad. I hate that movie. I hate that movie. I hate that movie. But it's so fitting the way things are going right now. Yeah, it is. All right. Dennis, it's been a pleasure. It I has been. Packed. I got to get out of here. Um, we're on the road tonight, so okay. I will be catching you from vacation in an undisclosed location. All right. So, everyone. You know, uh, you know my problem, so I, I won't.
I mean, yeah, I, I, well, you, you, we don't want to talk about it. So, well, yeah. But you get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get it. Yeah. You understand. I, I understand. You're very I, understanding. I, yes. I feel your pain. Thank yeah. you. All right, everyone. Leave your opinion or your thoughts on our listener line, and that's 413-612-8037. Reminding everyone to subscribe to our podcast via your listening preference. And don't forget to visit our website at fountainofthought.com for contests and so much more. And remember, everyone, be a fountain, not, not a drain. drain. You're a googly moogly.